please join me in welcoming Alan Feldman, Chair of the University of Illinois Foundation Board of Directors. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great opening video. We're all pumped up, right? Okay. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the University of Illinois Foundation Board of Directors, I'm honored to welcome you to the 83rd Annual Foundation Meeting. You know, I hope all of you had a chance to attend the reception last night. I thought it was a great opportunity to kick off this celebration weekend. Thanks to all of you who have traveled from near and far to join us here in Champaign-Urbana this weekend. We're very happy to get a chance to see you in person and spend some time together at this meeting and at all other special events that are planned for the weekend. I'd also like to welcome those of you who are watching us via the webcast. Each and every one of you are our faces of philanthropy. Your attendance, time, engagement, and proven commitment to the University of Illinois are greatly appreciated. And what makes us all together extraordinary. Through your generous support, the faculty, staff, and students of the University of Illinois system are able to explore, build, and deliver excellent work that has an impact extending around the world. Thank you for what you do, and please give yourself a round of applause for the incredible philanthropic efforts. Thank you. Now, as board chair, my term is two years, and you know, honestly, I can't believe it was just a year since I stood on this stage with Greg Likens and assumed this role. And I think at that time, Greg told me I'd have more fun than I thought, and time would go faster than I thought. He didn't tell me I'd have more work than I thought, but you know, <laughs> that's just the way things work out. All good. Thank you, Greg. And at the halfway mark of a chair's term, it's also time to acknowledge the chair elect. So at our June board meeting, the board elected Kay Schwichtenberg to take over in the fall of 2019. <laughs> Hold your applause for a moment. Kay has her MBA from the University of Illinois at Chicago and has recently retired as the president and CEO of Central Life Sciences, a firm specializing in the development, manufacturing, and marketing of animal health, public health, and agricultural products, but she still remains active with the company. Kay also serves on a number of boards and is a member of the Committee of 200, an invitation-only membership organization of the world's most successful women entrepreneurs and corporate leaders. Kay, please stand so we can recognize you. Thank you for saying yes. So I'd also like to take a moment and offer some special thank yous to my fellow governing directors. I'm grateful for their commitment to responsible and prudent governance. Each one takes their role as a fiduciary of this foundation with an incredible sense of care and responsibility. I'm consistently impressed with their boundless energy and timeless commitment to both the university and to each of you, the philanthropic investors in this great institution. And another group that I'd be remiss and take, not taking the opportunity to thank are our life directors. Now, life directors are those who have previously served the University of Illinois Foundation with distinction and dedication as governing directors and who continue to volunteer their time, talent, advice, and insight. So would all the governing directors and life directors please stand so we can recognize all of you. Thank you for your service and your leadership. Now, many of you have joined us as foundation members. And as you know, foundation members are a group of highly invested, highly committed donor champions who not only love the University of Illinois, but understand the importance of philanthropic role of the foundation. And the foundation members consistently invest and support the goals of the university system. Together, we number nearly 1,000. I think that number is just outstanding. And I would encourage each of you to find others and encourage them to join us as we work together on behalf of the University of Illinois. For those of you who in the room are our foundation members, would you please stand so we could recognize you.
Thank you. Thank you. So now I'd like to bring on stage Mary Kay Haben to the podium to share some important updates from our board meeting yesterday. Mary Kay is the chair of our membership and governance committee and the head of our Cubs fan club. <laughs> Thank you, Al and Ann. Go Cubs. That's good. I missed that game yesterday. Oh, there wasn't one. <laughs> Only Cub fans would appreciate that. Um, good morning, and it's good to be here. As Alan said, I'm uh, chair of the Membership and Governance Committee, so it's my pleasure to share the details with you of one of the key actions that we took yesterday in our board meeting. We elected three new governing board directors, Mary Ellen Pennycook, Helen McGrath, and Deborah Paul. And if I can, I'd like to just take a few minutes to share with you just a little bit about each one of these very accomplished women leaders. First, Mary Ellen Pennycook is a double degree earner from the U of I right here in Champaign. In 81, she received her bachelor's degree in economics and history from LAS. And in 87, she earned her law degree also here in Champaign. Professionally, she practiced law uh, before retiring in 1997. She continues to be very involved with the school. I happen to serve with her on the Chicago Athletics Advisory Board, which is great. Um, in addition, she and her family have made a very generous uh, gift to Illinois Athletics uh, in service to the state farm renovation efforts. This was in memory of her late husband, John, who she also met here on campus as an undergrad. Now, Mary Ellen is not here with us, but I'm sure she's watching on the webcast. So just in case, please join me in welcoming Mary Ellen to the Foundation Board. <laughs> Next, Helen McGrath has also been elected as a governing director. Like Mary Ellen, Helen also has two degrees from the U of I here in Champaign. She holds both a bachelor's and a master's degree in advertising from the College of Communications. She recently retired from a role as vice president of market insights at AT&T where she had a successful 30 plus year career. She led there the market insights team provided strategic and tactical decision making um, market intelligence across all of the AT&T system. Helen is also very connected to the university. She has been here as a corporate recruiter, a guest lecturer, as well as a mentor to many of our students. And additionally, she has been continuously generous in her donations to the College of Media. Helen, I know you're out there in orange because I saw you earlier. Please stand and be recognized. And last but not least, our third new governing director is Deborah Paul. And in 1997, Deb received her master's degree in biology from the U of I here in Champaign. She worked as a leading biochemist at Abbott Labs in the fight against HIV, infectious disease, and immunology for over two decades. She retired from Abbott in 2016. She has also been a philanthropic leader in the College of LAS and has established the Deb and Tim Paul Endowment Fund there to support the U of I's work in infectious disease and immunology. And this is a fund that she created in honor and memory of her late brother. Deb, I didn't see you walk in, but I'm sure you're in orange. Please stand as we recognize you, Deborah Paul. And with that, Deborah, Helen, Mary Ellen, thank you so much for joining the Foundation Board. We are privileged and grateful to having you serve alongside us. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mary Kay. Great job. I appreciate it. And welcome, Deborah, Helen, and Mary Ellen. Now, while I could recognize great individuals and hardworking groups that are in this room all morning, I suppose it's better we move on to this morning's main program. So it's now my pleasure to introduce our next speaker of the day, and that's University of Illinois Foundation President and CEO, Jim Moore. Jim is a well-respected and skilled fundraising professional with over 25 years of nationally recognized and award-winning fundraising experience. He came to the University of Illinois in 2015, and I'm 
happy to say I was instrumental in getting him to join us. And he came from the University of Arizona where he was also president and CEO. And Jim has also served as the president and CEO of the Northern Colorado Foundation. He's very active in his business uh, with Case and was recently named the chair elect of that organization and served previously as the treasurer of the Case Board. He's a former member of the Commission on Philanthropy and is the recipient of the Case Common Fund Institutionally Related Foundation. So you can tell he's quite a star in his business and we are lucky to have him. Please join me in welcoming Jim Moore. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm lucky to be here, so let me start with that. Thank you, Alan, and good morning to everyone. I'm delighted to see all of you here to celebrate the Foundation's 83rd annual meeting. We do have a full program here uh, today, and uh, it says I think you're going to enjoy it. I know you're going to enjoy it. However, before we start the business part of the meeting, I would like to just take a moment to mention some special guests that are in attendance today. If you would, please uh, bear with me and hold your applause until I acknowledge everyone. Current chair of the University of Illinois Board of Trustees, Dr. Timothy Koritz. Past trustees here with us today, Dave Downey, Larry Epley, and Jane Rader. Also joining us, we have two University of Illinois presidents, current president Tim Colleen, uh, who you'll hear from in just a little bit, and President Emeritus Bob Easter and his wife Cheryl. We also have with us today our leadership team, our chancellors. Susan Cook is in attendance representing Springfield. Chancellor Michael Amaridis is here with us from the University of Illinois at Chicago. And I'd like to give a special shout out and thanks to Chancellor Robert Jones for hosting us here in Urbana-Champaign. Chancellor Jones, thank you so much for your hospitality. Uh, also in attendance, uh, it's always fun the last three years to, to acknowledge this person. My good friend and colleague, Sid Misick, Emeritus Foundation president, is here celebrating our his 19th annual meeting. And of course, while Alan has already mentioned our foundation board members and all of our foundation members, I too want to thank our directors and foundation members for their attendance today. Over the next day, uh, you'll see uh, foundation directors are noted by gray ribbons on their name tags, and uh, they're also included in this year's uh, weekend guide. So thank you all for your dedication and service to the foundation and the university. Of course, I'd also be remiss if I didn't take a moment to thank our facility host and partner, Mike Ross, director of Cranert Center. This year is a special year for Cranert Center as we celebrate the 50th anniversary of this amazing facility. Think about that. It's hard to believe our community has enjoyed the benefit of this world-class performing arts center for the past five decades. So I got a little challenge for you. Let's be sure to help Mike and his team make sure that the next 50 years are just as glorious as the past 50 years. Mike, thank you. We're honored to be in the beautiful Tryon Theater once again this year. And now, would you please join me in thanking all of our special guests and giving yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> Since 1935, the foundation has been committed to securing and managing gifts and gener from generous donors like you. And for the past 83 years, my predecessors and I have had the, the benefit and the pleasure of providing an annual report at this meeting. I'm honored to be here today to give you a report on your foundation and the impact your gifts are having on the University of Illinois. Your thoughtful, kind, and generous support is what powers each of our universities to be the best they can be, and it helps faculty, staff, students, who changed lives in every corner of the world. When we gathered here last year, we were just about ready to kick off the largest and most ambitious fundraising initiative ever in the history of this university. A lot has happened over the last 12 months, most notably the launch of our three campaigns. Reaching Stellar, Ignite, and With Illinois, each campaign, when we launched them, showcased the uniqueness of our three universities, and created memorable experiences for thousands of alumni and friends. I want to thank all of you who attended the kickoff events 
from the, your early investments, for your early investments, and for all the, uh, the support you've made in this campaign. We're fortunate to have such a loyal and dedicated network of supporters. In fact, with over 85,000 students and hundreds of thousands of alumni, alumni, we are all together extraordinary. But I'll come back to some of this in just a minute. I, I think at this moment, uh, we're gonna start to, uh, uh, to talk a little bit about the financials. It's now my pleasure to introduce Ellen Ellison, Chief Investment Officer for the U of I Foundation. Ellen has more than 30 years of experience, and for the past five years, she's been rebuilding our portfolio. Today, Ellen will be re reviewing our recent financials and endowment performance data, so please join me in welcoming Ellen Ellison to the stage. Thank you, Jim. I had to give him the air kiss because I have a hug. I have a cold. Thank you all, and we're delighted that you're here today. Um, first slide, please. So I'm going to be speaking primarily about the um, most recent fiscal year results, which ended June 30th, 2018. And this first chart um, is important because it shows the asset growth of the foundation's endowment and um, we, we ended the year at approximately 1.8 billion in assets. Thank you all very much. And this growth show, this, this chart shows the nice positive slope of the growth of these assets over time going back to 1990. And I think you'll note that uh, that drop uh, that we affectionately referred to as the global financial crisis, GFC, that was the biggest drawdown about a decade ago but we have moved through it and uh, have more than doubled assets since then. And I think this chart is very important because it indicates the power of compounding, not only of the investment returns through thick and thin, but also th thanks to you of, of the gifts that you make to the endowment. Next slide, please. So endowments are set up. Next slide, please. Thank you. Endowments are really set up, they're all about providing both near-term and long-term support for the mission of the University of Illinois. And so this has three components, uh, and this is how we think of it. It includes, first and foremost, the distributions to the units, units of the university that are supported by specific endowments. We also support the foundation's operations, and we also want to stay ahead of inflation. And we call this combination of three elements the minimum required return, and that's illustrated by the light blue bar, the lighter or turquoise blue bar on the slide behind me. Um, for the most recent year, we can see that we met this performance metric, and we have also met it over the one, the one three, and five-year period, but our, really our ultimate goal, as Jim said, is making sure that we meet this minimum required return, which frankly is going up, uh, over the longest time periods. For example, for the most recent year, the inflation component of this return jumped from 1.6 to 2.9%, and that bumped up the minimum required return to 8%. So in a world that's getting increasingly competitive, uh, returns and the retur re minimum required return is going up. And we're very uh, aware of that on a daily basis. N may I have the next slide, please? Thank you. Asset allocation, or the way that we uh, mix and match this variety of assets, this is the backbone of much of our work. And the asset allocation is set by the Investment Policy Committee of the Board of the Foundation. You can see that the, the largest color is uh, equities, which are 53%, because in order to, ha to meet an 8% minimum return, you do need to have a lot of growth-related assets. But we also have 25% targeted to fixed income, 12% to real assets, and we uh, have really emphasized uh, agriculture and also agribusiness-related assets, given the, the heritage of this institution. And then also we have 20% allocated to private equity. Last slide, please. Finally, when we put all the pieces of various endowments together, uh, in addition to the 
the pooled endowment, which is our primary responsibility and that I've just reviewed, you can see that the total assets across the enterprise add up to over $2.7 billion. And the vast majority of these assets, 91%, are in the pooled endowments. I want to thank you all very much for your attention and we look forward to seeing as many of you as possible this afternoon at 2.30 at um, the Spurlock Museum for a special breakout session on the endowment. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ellen. We really appreciate uh, all that you do. And uh, for those of you who are interested in learning more about uh, the endowment, taking a little deeper dive into the endowment, uh, I hope you've registered for the workshop. It's at 245 in the Knight Auditorium at Spurlock Museum. Uh, we're gonna have Ellen, Mark Pytosh, who is also the uh, a foundation board member and uh, chair of our uh, investment policy committee. Christy Devisell, our chief financial officer, uh, and they'll all be together uh, to share their insights on endowment. Uh, the session will give you a chance to pick their brains, learn a little bit more about uh, the ins and outs of endowment management here at the University of Illinois. So now, as I said, we're gonna share a few more financials uh, from the last fiscal year. And again, hang in there, okay? It was a great year, so while this is a financial report, which I know you all love, uh, think of it a little bit more as a story that you and all of our faces of philanthropy helped to write. So let's start with new business. I'm thrilled to report this year that we recorded our best year ever in private support. $498.5 million in new business. So, so just as a reminder, you might wonder what's in that number. New business includes uh, new gifts, grants, pledges, and documented estate commitments. So here we can see uh, the new business totals for the last fiscal, five fiscal years. And $498 million is $212 million more than fiscal 2017. And it marks the 12th consecutive year that new business surpassed $250 million. I want to particularly acknowledge Larry and Beth Geese for their record-setting gift of $150 million. They are two faces of philanthropy who will be impacting the student and faculty experience here at the University of Illinois forever. This slide shows the sources of funding. So now we're gonna to switch to, to funding. Where, where did the money come from? As you can see, alumni are far and away the largest contributors with $296.3 million. Friends, corporations, foundations, and other sources such as donor advised funds and associations uh, accounted for the balance. This is a lot of money and you can see it comes from a lot of different places. So now we'll shift gears from new business to cash. This also was a record year for cash flow. And uh, remember cash is all of our uh, outright gifts, private gifts and grants, uh, pledge payments, annuities, and realized bequests and estate gifts. So there's something about cash you need to understand. It's some of the money when you see this number is actually money that was committed in previous years but collected in this year. So if, you're, if I have accountants in the room or people with, with slide rules and calculators and you're trying to figure out how some of this math adds up, it's a little tricky. But uh, this was the first time ever, the important takeaway here, that we uh, surpassed $300 million in cash. So another big record year. So kudos and thank you all for your support and the, and the cash that you provided. So uh, of the $302.6 million raised last year, alumni, again, were the largest donor source. Uh, also standing out last year, as you look at this, uh, uh, we're going to switch gears, there we go. Uh, when you look at sources, uh, also standing out last year uh, was uh, commitments from corporations. Corporate gifts were $74.6 million, or a quarter of the total. So when you look at year-over-year -year comparisons, we're going to switch to, to uh, compare to last fiscal year. The next chart, please, shows, uh, here we go. Uh, this shows... Uh, uh, the priorities that donors chose to support this past fiscal year compared to 2017. And uh, as you look at this, one of the things uh, that you'll notice is research remains the top priority of our donors at $62.1 million, followed by student support at $54.5 million. 
And uh, you can see we have funds that come in to support a variety of other areas. Uh, another uh, big number up here is unrestricted gifts. Uh, when you look at unrestricted funding at $95.4 million, that's a significant increase uh, from 2017 as well. So with unrestricted giving, it's important to also note uh, that while the category is accounted for uh, in, in, uh, from, on the financials as unrestricted funds, most of these gifts are actually restricted to a college, a unit, or a program to be used at the discretion of the dean or the director of that unit. Um, and, and again, if you ask our, our deans and our, our chancellors, um, they, they need cash just like they need endowment support. Uh, cash is, is really important to uh, everybody, uh, especially when uh, the, you know, the budgets are tight. So uh, this is a big number for us. And uh, when you look at the, the $302 million that we received, uh, this next slide shows uh, that 65% of it was current use and that's those current dollars that are going to be spent in, the give, in, in that particular fiscal year. But the endowment number is also important to know. You know during our campaigns, we're going to really try to emphasize growing the endowment, and you can see 33.2% of the funds we received were endowed, and 1.3% came uh, in the form of annuity and life income gifts. So that's essentially the 30,000-foot financial report. Uh, I hope you will uh, stay tuned for more detailed analysis as uh, uh, you look at our annual reports that's going to be, be published uh, here shortly. And uh, when you uh, have a chance to review those, if, if that's not enough, you can come to the website and check, check more out, uh, and uh, we'd be happy to provide you with additional detail if you'd prefer. So now I'll uh, provide a little bit of a snapshot of where our three campaigns are, or were really at the end of last fiscal year. Up first, with Illinois. With you, with Illinois. This campaign is about finding solutions to the world's challenges, propelling bright minds, a university at the heart of Illinois, and a university of distinction, keeping our gaze forward, imagining and building what is next. The With Illinois goal for this campaign is, again, we have three separate campaigns. The With Illinois goal is $2.25 billion. That's a heavy lift. That's a, big, that's a big number. But I'm proud to say as of June 30th, $1.35 billion has already been accounted for. That's 60% of our goal. So thanks to all of you who are already, always and forever with Illinois. Appreciate that. <laughs> Next up, Ignite, the campaign for UIC. Ignite is a call to action. Chancellor Amarita said he wanted, some, he, he wanted a theme that was going to motivate people. It's a call to action, and it will help redefine student success and empower faculty. Through Ignite, UIC will drive discovery and connect communities. The Ignite campaign goal is $750 million. This is an ambitious target. We knew it when we set it. And I'm happy to say today, $354 million has already been committed to support Ignite. That's nearly 50% of the goal. We've got a lot of work in front of us, uh, but we're excited about where we're at and appreciate Chancellor Amaritis' leadership and all of your support to Ignite, so thank you. So we actually kicked off the campaign season uh, with uh, the first of the three campaigns to launch, which was Reaching Stellar, the campaign for the University of Illinois Springfield. And Reaching Stellar is about affirming the aspirations, energy, and diversity of our students. Priorities that for the Reaching Stellar campaign include scholarships, faculty excellence funds, the Center for Lincoln Studies, which I'd encourage you all to learn about, the public good and enhanced student life and academic facilities. And of course, one of the cornerstones of that campaign so far has been our new student union. I can't say new, sorry, Chancellor Cook, our first student union at the University of Illinois Springfield. The goal for Springfield is $40 million. And this too is a heavy lift. Our last campaign at Springfield, the, the goal was about half that. So uh, I am really pleased to say that today, we've secured, or at the end of June 30th, we had secured $22.1 million, which is 55.3% of the Reaching Stellar goal. So in summary, the campaigns are all gonna roll up, yes.
And in summary, all the campaigns are going to roll up. So this is another one for you math folks out there. Don't get your calculator out. Because if you just add all of those numbers up, they don't come up to $3.1 billion. But in summary, that's what our campaign goal is. And that includes some additional gifts that come into the system, uh, come into the Alumni Association. All together, our, this is a, uh, a really heavy lift, and it's the, the largest comprehensive fundraising initiative we've ever undertaken here at Illinois. And at the end of the fiscal year, I'm pleased to say that we have secured, there we go, 3.1 billion, we have secured $1.75 billion, or 56.4% of that goal already. So give yourselves a round of applause, and thank you all for being a part of this altogether extraordinary effort. So as I said, I, I was going to try to be brief up here. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, you can learn a lot more about all of these numbers uh, through our digital networks. Visit the websites, check our social media links out, stay in touch, uh, and uh, also stay connected. So now it's my pleasure, uh, my distinct pleasure, to introduce the president of the University of Illinois system, Timothy L. Colleen. Pres uh, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. He did tell me to be brief, and we did shorten this up, but I learned a long time ago when donors tell you, oh, you don't have to thank me. That's not really what they mean. So I don't want to take a chance. <laughs> I don't want to take a chance when the president says, oh, you don't have to be you know, comprehensive. But, so I'm going to tell you a little bit more about him. He's going to try to push me off here. <laughs> president Colleen is the 20th president of the University of Illinois. He's in his fourth year here at Illinois. He comes to us with more than 30 years of public higher education experience, and he's also held some significant leadership positions with national scientific research agencies. Before coming to the U of I, he served as chancellor and uh, vice president for the Research Foundation at the State University of New York, one of the nation's largest higher education systems. And under his leadership here at Illinois, he's developed a new strategic framework We've experienced incredible enrollment growth, and he has launched new innovative initiatives to promote economic prosperity for Illinois and really the rest of the world. So I will honor his request and stop there. So ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome our University of Illinois president, Dr. Tim Colleen. Thank you, Jim, and good morning, everybody. And thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody uh, sitting in this for being here, but also for your support, your counsel, your engagement, your loyalty, and your commitment. And yes, indeed, we are on the move. And uh, setting grammar aside, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> Over the course of a 150 year plus now um, lifetime, University of Illinois system has carved out a range of distinct identities, all rooted in a rich history and an impact that has come to define us in the minds of people literally around the world. Some think of us as the home of one of the nation's original land-grant universities right here, Havana champaign which really helped set off a wave of opportunity and scholarship that has changed higher education and society forever. Others think of the best-in-class academic programs at each of our universities, programs that help make Urbana the 13th best public university in the nation in this month's U.S. World and News Report, report rankings, and pushed UIC up from 73rd to 61st among the publics, and number seven, publics and privates, for best value for money. I normally don't talk about rankings, but heaven's sake, we're going to talk about them now. Still others identify us with the extraordinary legacy of achievement of our faculty and alumni. Nobel Prizes, Pulitzer Prizes, Oscars, Emmys, pioneering discovery that includes the LED, the graphical internet browser, night vision technology, and the new shingles vaccine. And new businesses founded by our graduates that include household names like Netscape, YouTube, PayPal, the Pampered Chef, and many others. Closer to home, we're known as Illinois' flagship university system and its largest educator. With enrollment now, as you've heard, across our three universities that rose to more than 85,000 students this fall, setting a new record for the sixth straight year. 
There's not a thing wrong with any of these descriptions. In fact, I can feel my chest pounding a little bit more uh, just talking about them, and there's more things we could say. But I'm, I'm partial to a simpler, stripped-down label as well that we had in our strategic framework. It's front and center on the title page of our strategic framework, the roadmap that we created, co-created to guide our future. And it sums up what we are all about and who we are in just three words. We are the public's university. No other public system has this manic, uh, moniker as far as I know. But at our core, at our very core, everything we do in our classrooms, in our labs, in our outreach, is focused on a singular target, promoting the public good and building an even better tomorrow for the people of our state, Illinois, and beyond. And that moniker reminds us to never lose sight of our bottom line, supplying talented, creative, vibrant workforce, and the kind of innovation that drives progress, and the civic-minded citizens that lift their communities. But what I like best about it, actually, is that the, the name has a bit of a double meaning. The university system doesn't just serve the public. It has flourished over these many years because of the public, because of that partnership. The generations of public support that have guided us from the very beginning are continuing to do so. So the public's university also signifies a tip of a hat to the public partnership that has helped build this remarkable system. And it's a richly deserved salute to people like all of you who have made us what we are through your support, your counsel, your kindness, as Jim said, and your generosity. Because of you, we can make bold plans with confidence, like the ones in our strategic framework which raises the bar to the very highest rung. We want to be the model in higher education for the land-grant system, the global model for higher education, the place where the whole world turns for pioneering ideas. And because of you, we are already on our way to reach our goals. Thanks to you, this is a university system truly on the move. We're on the march, one that picked up Steve even during the historic two-year state budget impasse that sharply reduced funding for our data A operations. We weathered that, we came out stronger. Here are another signs of strong upward mo uh, momentum. Moody's just raised our debt finance bonding authority just yesterday. Um, that's good. The continuing enrollment gains I mentioned earlier have kept us on a pace to hit our ambitious long-range target that we set with a lot of thought and analysis two years ago to get to more than 93,000 students system-wide by 2021. That's a big number. That's a lot of families, a lot of young people, a lot of non-traditional learners uh, all across the state and beyond. This fall's growth that we're on also reflects our commitment to another priority, to increase enrollment here at home in Illinois, to increase the enrollment of Illinois students and STEM and out-migration to colleges in other states. And we are doing that with a solution to that problem and we're making important gains. Keeping our best and brightest students here is vital to Illinois' economic health because research shows that most will stay in the state where they studied and use their talents after they graduate there. So system-wide, Enrollment of in-state undergraduates increased 3% this last year to nearly 46,000 students this fall. And you can literally trip over them as you walk around the campus, as you know already. And Illinois students now comprise more than 80% of our total undergraduate population. Enrollment growth was supported by our in-state tuition freeze that we have extended to a fourth consecutive year next fall. And this is the longest tuition freeze in more than four decades. Yes, we're committed to affordability. And it was supported by you through institutional scholarships and financial aid that has soared from $84 million to nearly $220 million over the last decade. Yes, we're committed to affordability. We're also doubling down on our investment in two other critical areas that have long benefited from your generous support and gifts. Over the summer, we announced the first professors that have been hired under a new initiative launched last year to build on our global standing as a leader in education and innovation. We call it the President's Distinguished Faculty Hiring Program. It was created to recruit 
faculty of national and international distinction to our three universities from a broad range of disciplines, faculty that will expand the exceptional scholarship that attracts students and research funding to our universities. We have now the first cohort, and this first cohort will add acclaimed, established world experts in electronics innovation, cancer treatment, regenerative medicine, pain management, public finance, policy evaluation, and the history of science. And it's just the start of a three-year, $60 million initiative that will expand the ranks of great faculty, the faculty that define us through their groundbreaking scholarship and that helps us carve out this unique identity and distinct reputation for excellence. These new faculty are gonna add to our wonderful existing faculty in ways that will really truly enrich the students that come through our doors. We're also continuing to work towards another new hiring program that will bring in hundreds of assistant professors. Not yet established, but brilliant assistant professors over the next five years to maintain the right size classes of tomorrow, to teach at the highest levels of pedagogy, and to become the stars of tomorrow. We're also ramping up our investments in other areas, in bricks and mortar, for example, to ensure that our facilities match the excellence of our faculty and our academic programs that include dozens of programs ranked among the nation's very best, as you know. But facilities have always been a priority, even during the state budget impasse. And I wanna let you know that over the last five years, we have found a way to invest more than $1.2 billion in system-wide renovations, upgrades, new construction, classrooms, laboratories, and facilities, much, much of it supported, of course, by your generous gifts. And this list includes the Siebel Center for Design being built right here in a banner, which is gonna be a unique new hub of student-focused learning and discovery. The first and the first ever student union that opened earlier this year in Springfield. If you've not visited, you have to go there to get that sense. And a truly innovative residence and learning center under construction at UIC, emerging out of the ground as we speak. Even more projects are in the works and will be outlined in a long-range capital plan that the Chancellor's Provost and I are working on to develop to ensure that future bricks and mortar investments support our strategic goals. We have to match all of these different factors uh, to really be the best we can possibly be. Finally, we are also continuing to make additional bricks and mortars for two new important research initiatives that Governor Rauner announced last fall and the state, in a bipartisan manner, chose the University of Illinois system to lead. Historic, once in a generation opportunity. Last spring, as I hope all of you know, and if you don't, please come visit, the state approved and signed into law a generous capital budget that provides a half a billion dollars to the University of Illinois system to develop the Discovery Partners Institute, a world-class innovation center in Chicago that will spread its impact across the state through the Illinois Innovation Network, which is a virtually connected systems of world-class hubs, including a major hub here in Urbana and one in Springfield. This new statewide network is a big idea, can only come from an institution like ours. It'll include all three of our universities and other partners, including Northwestern uh, and University of Chicago and many others, and we've outlined spending priorities to develop each of these hubs during forums last month from f with our faculty and staff. So it's gonna be a grassroots, bottoms up process to really define and launch the state of Illinois into a new era of innovation, job creation uh, for our students. Here in Urbana, for example, our plans include a world-class center devoted to the fast growing field of data science and also expansion of the campus's award-winning research park. We're gonna build out on uh, success, uh, which will breed more success. The Discovery Partners Institute and the Illinois Innovation Network will rocket our time-tested formula for discovery and innovation to a bigger scale, a massive scale. This is like the mid Midwest's answer to the East Coast and the West Coast led out of your university, the public's university. We seek to recruit hundreds of world-class researchers who will work with thousands of our students and countless businesses, small, medium, and large, 
investors and entrepreneurs. This is the 22nd century economy that we're starting to build right here. So all of this promise is to pack a wallop to our strategic framework. Yes, we wrote those words. Lo and behold, it's happening. Uh, and this is going to challenge us to achieve, to foster discovery that will generate new products, capabilities, job opportunities, new businesses, and a new era of, era of prosperity for Illinois and the Midwest. We want to lead the Midwest. We want to lead the state of Illinois. So it's time to wrap up. Um, uh, former First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt, who was a visitor to this great campus back in the fall of uh, 1960, once said that the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. So we're dreaming, they are beautiful, and we're gonna get to that future. And it's because of all of you, all of you are the reason we can believe so strongly in our future and why we can dream so big. And we do owe it to the 85,000 students who are under our wing and the 22,000 graduates that come off our pipeline every year. So you, generous donors, are the namesakes of our public, the public's university. A truly world-class university system built through generations and generations of public support and focused squarely and relentlessly on the public good. So my deepest thanks and through me, all of our thanks, our students, our faculty, our staff, everything that you do, your loyalty, your support, your presence, your counsel, and please enjoy your weekend on this truly magnificent, growing campus. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome University of Illinois Professor Emeritus and Scholarship Donor Berks Oakley II to the stage. Thank you, thank you. Good morning, uh, and for those of you who don't know me, again, my name is Berks Oakley, and I'm not here as an alumnus of any of the uh, three fine institutions of the University of Illinois system. In fact, I got my degrees from a couple of Big Ten rival schools. Uh, my undergraduate degree was from Northwestern. Both my master's and PhD were from Michigan. Mm. <laughs> now, believe me, I, I know how some people around here feel about Michigan, so don't hold that against me. I can assure you my loyalty is with Illinois. With Illinois, do you get that? <laughs> so I'm, I'm here to speak to you today as a longtime supporter and friend of the University of Illinois. Over the course of my adult life, I developed a dedication to the university that truly runs deep. During my career, I was a professor in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering here in Urbana, but I also held faculty appointments at UIC and UIS. And for the past, uh, the last 10 years of my career, I served as the Associate Vice President for Academic Affairs in the U of I system office. And this work across the system gave me a feeling of being connected to all three universities. I gained an even greater appreciation for the distinct strengths and personalities that make each university unique and special. But today, I really want to do more than just talk about what I've done in my career and my feelings about the University of Illinois. I'm, I'm actually here to talk to you about some ideas that my mother instilled in me and that I've tried to practice throughout my adult life. First, the deep belief in the power of higher education to have a positive impact on individuals. And, and second, that we must make it a priority to give back with our time, our talents, and our treasures with the hope of bettering the world in which we live. I've been given so much in my life, both personally and in my career. Just like many of you here today, I've chosen to pay it back by supporting scholarships at the University of Illinois. I've endowed scholarships for women students in engineering here in Urbana, as well as scholarships for working mothers at UIS who would not be able to earn a college degree without financial assistance. I love hearing from and connecting with the students who have benefited from my scholarships. I cherish each and every note of thanks or conversation over lunch. To know that I'm making a difference is so important to me and, and certainly a source of personal pride. 
As I just mentioned, I've endowed the Oakley Scholarships for women studying electrical or computer engineering here in Urbana. And I'm proud to say that this past April, we awarded six new Oakley Scholarships, making the grand total an even 100. Thank you, thank you. So, so it's, it's really great to know that I'm having a positive impact on so many lives. So having said this, I know that I'm not alone in finding personal satisfaction in funding scholarships. I'm just one of the many faces of philanthropy who appreciate and understand the importance and lasting impact of scholarships. So to bring more of these faces to life, it's now my pleasure to introduce a short video that shares a few more stories of impact from both the donor and scholarship recipient perspectives. I hope you enjoyed that collection of inspirational quotes and messages. And now it's my pleasure to introduce a remarkable young woman and athlete, Nicole Evans. Nicole was a fighting Illini softball player and was named the 2017 Arthur Ashe Jr. Female Sports Scholar of the Year, a, a national award. Nicole was selected for this prestigious award from over 1,200 nominees. Nicole excelled athletically and academically yet also made time to give back to the community via Big Brothers Big Sisters of America and the Down Syndrome Network, as well as a number of other worthy causes in the community. Please join me in welcoming Nicole to the stage where she will tell you a little bit more of her story. Thank you, thank you so much. much. Thank you. So good morning, everyone. My name is Nicole Evans. I've been at the University of Illinois now for five and a half years, but I promise I didn't flunk any classes. <laughs> I completed my Bachelor of Science degree in kinesiology while getting to play softball for the Fighting Illini, and I'm currently completing my master's degree. I've been extremely blessed and lucky to receive scholarships for both my undergraduate and graduate careers, and I've learned so much about the gift of philanthropy. But to be honest, before this university, scholarships were really just a way for me to get to play softball. So when I was really young, I started in gymnastics, and I realized that I needed a team sport, more of a team atmosphere. So then I moved on to soccer, which did not last long, because I realized that there's way too much running in that sport. <laughs> and then in the third grade, I moved on to softball. By the fifth grade, I was absolutely hooked in the sport playing travel ball getting to hit something, be dirty all the time, and not get in trouble, and hang out with my friends made for the perfect storm. So as my career progressed in the sport, I got to go on recruiting visits and learn about different universities and different programs. And then one day, my travel ball coach got a call from the University of Illinois asking me on a visit down to Champaign-Urbana. I remember driving down, 
pulling into the parking lot and stepping out onto the gravel. And as cliche as it might sound, this place felt different. I knew that I needed to be here at that time. So an athletic scholarship allowed me to be part of an amazing Fighting Illini family, and an academic scholarship allowed me to receive a world-class education. These scholarships were so impactful for both my family and myself, and I was so grateful for them. But I don't think I truly understood the gift of philanthropy until I met Mr. Ron Filler. So my senior year here at the University of Illinois, I received an email congratulating me on being a Filler Scholar. I remember walking into the dinner a few weeks later, completely unaware that I would meet one of the most amazing mentors and a family who would teach me so much about the gift of philanthropy. So fast forward a little bit. Two weeks ago, I attended my fourth Filler Scholarship dinner where Ron and Paula Filler awarded their 100th scholarship. Big deal. So at every dinner, Mr. Filler stands up and asks his recipients to make a pledge, to make him a promise that someday, somewhere, somehow, these scholarship recipients will do something for someone else, will give back. So this past summer, I was extremely lucky to have the opportunity to be a Case Rice Fellow at the University of Illinois Foundation. And one of my first tasks was to look up and really understand what philanthropy means. So in doing this research, I learned that philanthropy is the desire to pro promote the welfare of others or the love of humanity. So the desire to promote the welfare of people or to love people. A summer at the University of Illinois Foundation, as well as the Filler family, really taught me that people often give to give back, to help someone else. So philanthropy at the University of Illinois Springfield, at the University of Illinois Chicago, and at the University of Illinois here in Urbana-Champaign has helped hundreds of thousands of students to learn in some of the most innovative classrooms to receive world-class educations, and to truly change the trajectory of their lives. And you see, when you receive a scholarship, it's not just you, the one person who benefits. It's parents who can breathe a sigh of relief that their daughter can attend an amazing institution such as this. It's two little brothers who finally realize that it's as important to hit the books as it is to hit the gym. <laughs> and it's an amazing mentor who I can now call family. One philanthropic act or initiative can truly promote the welfare of generations. It's so much more than just one donation, one gift, one scholarship. Thank you all so much, and I would now like to welcome to the stage two very special people, Christine Schwartz and Anthony Fatulo. So Chris Schwartz earned a Bachelor's of Science degree in nursing at UIC and a Master's of Science in Health Education from Urbana. She is a member of the UIC College of Nursing's Dean External Advisory Board and the President's Council of the University of Illinois Foundation, as well as a life member of the University of Illinois Alumni Association. She also is active in the Sigma Theta Tau International Nursing Honor Society. Through Chris's visionary leadership, the UIC College of Nursing's physical environment has been transformed with the construction, design, and renovation of facilities that were built in 1969. This included the M. Christine Schwartz Experiential Learning Laboratory, the M. Christine Schwartz Lobby, and the M. Christine Schwartz Research Seminar Rooms at the College of Nursing. Due to her generous support, Chris has been a philanthropic leader at UIC, certainly for the College of Nursing, but also for the Ignite campaign as she has provided some of the largest gifts in its history. In addition to her interest in nursing, Chris advocates for the arts through her membership in Sustaining Fellows at the Art Institute of Chicago, Art Encounter in Evanston, Illinois, a nonprofit art education outreach organization, and her collection of Chicago artists view on her website, shortscollection.com. Currently, two paintings from this collection are on loan to the newly reopened Illinois Governor's Mansion in Springfield. Please join me in warmly welcoming Christine Schwartz. Thank you. So now I would like to bring another person to the stage, Mr. Anthony Petulo. Tony Petulo earned his BS in marketing from the University of Illinois here at Urbana-Champaign. After graduation, Tony went on to serve as a U.S. Navy officer 
worked for Mobile Corporation, and ultimately founded and became president of a successful temporary hiring firm in Milwaukee, Olsten Staffing Services. An expert in outsider art, Tony has built a renowned and vast collection of art that has been shared with a number of museums, including our very own Craner Art Museum. His philanthropy has also established co-programs at the Illinois Leadership Center, one named professorship, two fellowships, each in the School of Art and Design, and has created the Petulo Scholars, a series of scholarships which recognize Geese College of Business students who have demonstrated academic excellence and commitment to serve others. Please join me in welcoming Tony Petulo. Thank you, good morning, good to see you again. Okay, so now we get on to the fun part. <laughs> okay, would you mind just starting us off um, by telling us, you know, what inspired you to make your first gift to the University of Illinois um, and how that's impacted you? Um, I'm from the College of Nursing at UIC in Chicago, and I had been away from the university for probably 30 years, and uh, the dean, Terry, called me in and said, would you like to come back and visit campus? And I said, sure, of course, it's been a while, it's a good time to redo our relationship. So I walk into the lobby of the College of Nursing up in Chicago, and here sitting in the middle of the lobby is this 40-foot tall, boarded up situation that blocks all of you and all the sunlight. And I said, Dean, what is this? And she says, well, this is the escalator that has not been working for 10 years. And for three years, we have turned down the money to get it fixed. And I go, seriously, how do you expect anybody to want to come to school here when you're welcomed with a boarded up escalator. Obviously, I'm a bricks and mortar philanthropist. I said, Dean, send me the numbers. I'm going to get rid of this escalator, which went through three floors. <laughs> so I'm inviting you up to this incredible lobby, because in addition to, I said, getting rid of it, I said, you know what? I want this lobby to be dedicated to all the future nursing students and to the current nursing students and faculty and staff to have an area to congregate in, uh, wire up on their computers to, you know, meet and greet, and that's what we have now. Huge lobby, beautiful sunlight. So I'm inviting you all to Chicago, to the College of Nursing, and see the library, uh, see the lobby, and you'll hang out with all the students the minute you open that door. It's a great feeling. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Tony, would you mind sharing your experience? Thank you, Nicole. Um, during the 1990s, uh, I made a few uh, modest donations to the university. And, uh, and some artwork to the Cranford Art Museum and was involved in, uh, in helping establish a, a more, a better community relations for the art museum. And uh, in year 2000, I thought, maybe I better do something a little more. <laughs> so I called my, my friend Bernie uh, at the foundation and uh, I said, Bernie, I'd like to do something a little more significant. So why don't you take a look around and see how I can make an impact with students and something that, that's different. So she said, I'll take a look. 30 minutes later, <laughs> <laughs> Pat Askew, the uh, vice chairman of student affairs called. I had never met Pat and we introduced ourselves. And then she started talking and talking and talking. <laughs> And I finally said, Pat, please take a breath. I need to ask some questions. <laughs> so I asked some questions about what her program was. Well, it was about student leadership. And she and some faculty and administrators and, and a few students had been working on a very unique le uh, leadership program, but they had no money. So I said, why don't you send me some information about what you've been doing and where you are? So a couple of weeks later, my daughter Amy and I made a trip down and we talked to that whole group for a couple of hours. And then we left because we were gonna meet with Pat and uh, Pat Askew and, and Bernie Freeman and then Provost Richard Herman for dinner at the Illini Union. And Amy and I were staying there so before dinner, I 
called Amy's room and I said, Amy, come over and we're going to talk about this. So we sat in my room and I said, okay, what do you think of this? And we, we made a decision and went off to dinner. So now we're having chit chat during dinner and, and everybody's on pins and needles on the other side of the table. <laughs> and, and, uh, and so Pat's talking about, you know, where they were, their ambitious plans and what they plan to do. So it got quiet and I said, well, would a million dollars help you get started? <laughs> and Pat later told me she wanted to jump over the table and hug me. <laughs> well, they got started. They're now celebrating their 15th year um, of operation. And just for example, they, last year they, they had 1,200 students spend one day in leadership, a very variety of I programs in leadership, and uh, it, it makes a significant uh, change in their attitude. 6,000 students were parts of work, various workshops across campus, helped by student interns. Mm -hmm. 200 people or more are now in what developed because of leadership, a minor in leadership, and 90 people completed a leadership certificate last year, which is very extensive study and several courses to do this. And, uh, and today, I'm very proud. That was my first investment. We'll talk about more later. <laughs> Great, well, thank you both so much. So you both have such varied backgrounds have, and have lived and gone different places. Can you please tell us, you know, what motivates you to stay involved with the University of Illinois? What keeps you here with us? Um, I think, um, first of all, the dean won't let me leave. <laughs> I just finished the, uh, the escalator project, and guess what? She has a new sim lab that's in the works right now that we're funding and will be done next year. 15,000 square feet, um, and so now, as I remove the escalator, this is in the lower basement level of the College of Nursing. 24 toilets were down there we had to take out. <laughs> so I tell you, this is the most interesting school ever. But great bones, and the sim, sim lab will be done next year, so we will be able, one of the most exciting things about this that keeps me coming back is that we have six campuses. We are covering the entire state of Illinois to create nurses to take care of you people when somebody is not doing so well. So that's one of our missions to do that. And we need the simulation lab, which is why it's always something else to improve the facilities to make us you know, into the 22nd century. So it's those kinds of things that just getting better and better and the tools that our students need to do that. Great, thank you. How about you, Tony? Um, I've lived for the last 50 years in the state of Wisconsin, that place that has mostly red color. So when I wear orange, I stick out. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I was born and raised in Chicago. So when I come back to this campus, beginning in late 80s probably and 90s, more and more each time I felt like I was coming home. Mm. And even today, yesterday, or yesterday when I arrived, it was today, Friday, Wednesday, I've been here for three days already. <laughs> uh, on Wednesday, I, I was walking around in, in all this heat and thinking, this, this is just like home. This, this, this is what I remember about my youth, my young adulthood. And listening to President Colleen now talk about all their ambitious plans, which I think are absolutely fantastic especially when we're getting so much less money from the state than when I was here, far, far less cash. And how they could do so much with the resources they have and the innovation and all the new programs, the interdisciplinary work um, has just made me feel so strong about continuing to support this university. Great. Thank you both so much for that. So as we move on here, can you tell us, you know, what from your life has played a role in inspiring your involvement here at the University of Illinois? Would you like to start us off, Tony? Um, 
Probably nursing. Nursing, you know, is caring, and it's just a, a small step to bettering human mankind by doing mm -hmm. that. So that's it's a natural extension. But I think that you know we've seen this occurs in many of the universities. I'm excited about seeing young people and young students get involved in philanthropy from day one when they step on campus. Mm -hmm. When I went to school, we did not think about that. It wasn't even mentioned. We were just trying to beat the books and get through the tests and survive and get enough sleep. But in your case, I was very excited, and I want to get one question eventually to ask you how that is now having you become aware of the research in philanthropy and being a, the young face of philanthropy, which mm -hmm. is so exciting um, going forward, especially after you graduate. So just hold that question. So um, I think we, we should all learn. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I came from very modest beginnings and um, I, I, I earned about two thirds of what it cost me every year to attend the university. My father gave me uh, one third. That was $40 a month, incidentally. Uh, and that, so this is a long time ago. Uh, and so I, I realized how tough it was uh, to get through on that amount of money. And I didn't have much excess, you know. It's, you're, we remember you had a, a ratio on campus of three men to one woman. So if you didn't have much money, uh, the best you could do on a date was, if you found one, was, would you like to go Dutch treat? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> so, uh, but you know, over, over the years, especially in the last, last couple of decades, I, I watched the cost of attending this major university escalate. So I, I developed my own little formula and I, I used a ratio of what it cost me, my total expense for one year, my last year here, and then what was my starting annual salary? And I made a ratio out of that. The ratio for me was my salary was about three and a half or more times the cost of my last year here. If I judge, an average cost around the, the all colleges here would could go from you know very widely for their starting salaries, and the cost of attending for one year here and their salaries, salaries today would be somewhere between one and a quarter or one and three times. So you could see it's so much more expensive to to attend versus the annual income that you, you would receive in your first year out on the, in the work society. So it's absolutely necessary to have scholarships. If your family can't support you here, you're gonna have to work a lot more. I never could have made it with that kind of ratio. I never could have attended this university. There weren't that many scholarships and uh, it, it just wouldn't have been possible. So it's very important that they have, my, some of my students, my Petulo scholars, have two, even three scholarships, piecing it together. And then they're working part-time on campus. Sometimes they can't attend our, se our sessions because they're working. So it's, scholarship support is absolutely critical. Great. Thank you so much. You know, that's a lot of math, Tony, and we're really, really happy that you've done it and that <laughs> you, you both give back. So thank you. Um, but I'll go back to your yeah. question, Chris. Um, so this past summer when I was at the foundation, um, I got to learn a lot about philanthropy and you know, how it works and kind of the different facets of it. And it was really inspiring to be a scholarship recipient, both academic and athletic, to see how that impacted myself and then to some of my my teammates and classmates who, who were having three jobs and on scholarships and trying to go to practice in class. Um, so if I can do something to kind of pull in the young alumni and make them realize, us realize that it's so important to really give back and then we can grow into amazing donors like the two of you, that's something that I'm, I'm really passionate about. So. I think you're, that's a You're a perfect example <laughs> of, the, of what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> It's not easy, and yet you smile. You keep smiling. <laughs> hey, life is good. We're all You're happy. Yeah, absolutely. 
All right, well, moving on here, um, would you like to share an an anecdote that really moved you that you stick with throughout your life? <laughs> start with you, Chris. <laughs> yeah, my, as, yeah, my famous escalator story, yeah. yes. <laughs> um, I, you know, it's, it's really important, I think, for the person to understand that philanthropy is not just writing a check. I like the idea that you've expanded the whole scope of that and that we need to reteach what philanthropy is, mm -hmm. that it's like human kindness and just we are a public university and that anybody can participate in philanthropy even if they don't have the money and maybe someday in the future they will, that we need to start this at the ground level. Mm -hmm. And that's what I, that it's more than just writing a check. It's a whole feeling, it's a whole persona and students can do that, even if it's a human act of kindness, which we do in nursing all the time, but yet everybody in every college can do that. So at philanthropy, we need to get everybody on board that it's bigger than just writing a check, and everybody could be part of it, which is a good thing. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And that's why when I was looking at the definition, you know, of philanthropy, yeah. that was one of the things that the financial part was actually kind of the second part. It's more about, you know, promoting the welfare of people and helping people. Yeah, so perfect. That, that's interesting that you should say philanthropy and learning philanthropy. Um, in, in my background, uh, philanthropy was, was, was keeping the family together. And, uh, and I had some mentors in, in Milwaukee who really taught me philanthropy. What, what is it all about? And then working in a lot of uh, nonprofit organizations and sitting on boards in Milwaukee, I, I realized how, in, how important philanthropy was. And uh, we didn't have a family history of it. So I think philanthropy has to be learned. And you have to help, help teach others right. about philanthropy. The students that, that uh, in addition to a professor, a named professor at, at art and design, and then two uh, graduate, graduate students, and, and, a, and one in the business college, a professor and two, two graduate students, this year I had 13 scholars at Petulo Scholars. We meet every semester and they submit questions to me at my request well before the meeting so that I can prepare and some of their questions are pretty tough. They, they involve what's, what's the real world like outside? How do I make the adjustment? Will I be accepted? Mm -hmm. what, and what's happening in current events now? Is there, are we going to have a market crash? One of my questions on Wednesday night when we had dinner with all the scholars was, when's the next recession? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> We're at a peak right now. Let's not talk about the recession. It's amazing what they get out of me being with them and communicating. So if you have a scholarship, that's, if you give a scholarship, that's wonderful. Even more meaningful is meeting with that scholar, and if you can keep a relationship with that scholar, you make a big impact in that person's life. I have now 40 plus scholars in over five years now in, in the business college, and some of the graduates still email me. Yeah. What do you think about this? I wanna make a move. Well, what do you think? This is what I'm doing now. And and they really become attached, and they need that. They need that reinforcement. So giving scholarships is wonderful, but I'm telling you, it is really fun to be with them on a regular basis and, and understand what they're going through. It's much, much more competitive today than I was here. There's a lot of stress involved. They asked, that was one of the questions. They asked me on this round, they said, well, how do you control stress? <laughs> And I said, I don't have stress. I give stress. <laughs> oh. oh, that was great. And I'll, I'll echo you too on the student side that 
getting to learn from, you know, Mr. Filler and talk to someone who's even maybe not necessarily in your field, but someone outside of your family, outside of your professors and friends who you can bounce ideas off and learn from is a huge deal. And like you said, to some of the students who might not have that home background, who might not have a f their first generation students, they need a mentor who they can look to. So it, it's a huge deal and so, so thankful that both of you are giving back and really connecting with the students. So as we move on here and wrap up, can you just tell us, you know, how do you reflect on your contributions and what makes you the most proud so far? Well, I think, you know, philanthropy's changed into the idea that we need to do this while we're alive, because you just saw what Tony benefited from seeing what those incredible human contacts, relations, financial backing, that we need to get over the idea that philanthropy happens after you've passed on, because you need to do this now, we need to do this while you're alive. And you need to start when you're really young. And so that's, the, I think, the biggest thing that keeps me pushing to do that. Um, I have 22 nieces and nephews among our family. Mm -hmm. We decided, you know, we are very big on giving them money. But we decided, you know what, we're going to give you your inheritance now. You are from age 9 through age 21. We gave all of them their inheritances 10 years ago, and I said, we have the office that will oversee these um, actually these gifts, and they, we have changed all their lives because we gave it to them when they were young. They're able to go to school, they're able to buy a car, they're able to uh, buy a, a house or a condominium because of getting their inheritance. And the other thing that's really good about that is they don't wish us dead because while we're alive, <laughs> we're still writing checks. Yep. Yep. <laughs> wow. Well, um, listen, li <laughs> you know, how do you top that? I just, <laughs> it is. <laughs> li li listening to you, Nicole, about your sports, mm -hmm. and, and it's really great. I participated in sports, too, and it was an integral part of my life. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we're, we're going to have a football game tonight, and, uh, and we're even win. though we may not be at the, at the top of the Big Ten in some of the major sports, but this, this university, academically, in production, innovation, is a superstar. It really is a superstar. When you look at the number of Nobel Prize winners, Pulitzer Prize winners, Crawford Chemistry, and all of the things that have come out here, sometimes we're too darn quiet about what we do. But this is a great university. And that's one of the reasons that I've, I've supported two, two professors. And incidentally, in art and design, it was the first endowed professor they ever had in design. Wow. And design has become a very important part in all the other colleges. We're building this wonderful uh, design center now, thanks to Tom Siebel. But the faculty here is outstanding, and there's huge competition to steal them. <laughs> and so we have to support them. We have to support the students. This is a great, great university, and I'm extremely proud to be a member of the family. Great. Thank yeah. you so much. We get to stay in the comfy chairs. So... <laughs> I was supposed to come back up here and <laughs> ask a few more questions, but you have said, uh, what you've said uh, uh, really has, um, uh, I think, been impactful. Yeah, the passion you shared about why you do what you do. Um, I don't know that I could ask any more questions, but I do want to make a point that, you know, we talked about what philanthropy is. Uh, uh, Chris said what it's not. It's not just about writing the check. One of the things I want to add to all of the lists of, of uh, uh, really the impact of giving in, in philanthropy is to say that, you know, from my experience doing this work for you know, 25 years, I've come to conclude that, that giving is heroic. You know, when you think about the uh, impact of, of the investments that have been made, you think about in Nicole's case, the hero that she now has in Ron Filler. I can't thank you enough for being our heroes 
and for the, uh, the, the, the thousands of lives you've impacted and will impact from here forward. So please join me one more time in a round of applause for these wonderful people. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Wow, what an inspiring time this was this morning. Thank you, Burks, Nicole, Christine, and Tony. It was an honor to hear your stories and the insights about the importance and impact of giving. It's your passion and participation for people like you that truly make a difference in the lives and how they have changed. So how about one more round of applause for those inspiring stories. I don't know about you, but I didn't have a dry eye during that time. So uh, many of you may remember uh, our dear friend and colleague, Walt Knorr, and his famous football score predictions. You know, they were often funny, rarely accurate. <laughs> it's going to change tonight, I hope. Uh, anyway, so I was going to bring Walt out of retirement to give us his prediction this year, but he was unable to join us, and you know, it's probably time for a change anyway. However, there's a special guest that I would like to bring to the stage right now who might be able to give us a little football mojo. So please welcome Fighting Illini Athletic Director, Josh Whitman to the stage. Now, just a couple words about Josh if you don't know. He's been the athletic director since 2016 and is a proud Illinois alum. He graduated bronze tablet. How many of you graduated bronze tablet? <laughs> I tipped it in there. Ah. Uh, and to top that, summa cum laude from the College of Law. Josh also excelled on the football field. He was a four-year starting tight end from 1997 to 2000 and then spent parts of four seasons as a player in the NFL with Time on the San Diego Chargers, the Miami Dolphins, Seattle Seahawks, and the Buffalo Bills. Impressive. We're lucky to have him. Josh, fire us up. Well, good morning. I tell you, I, I want to thank Alan and, and Jim for the opportunity to, to visit with everyone. Thanks for making the, the time to come back and, and share uh, our campus over what I, I hope is a very exciting weekend. Uh, despite some of these things that Alan read, how impressive is Nicole Evans? Because uh, I, I tell you, I, I do a lot of speaking now, and, and when I was her age, if you had handed me a microphone and asked me to stand here on the stage, I think it would have gone largely like this. And, and so for her to, to do what she just did, I, I can't tell you how proud we are of her uh, all of her accomplishments, all that she has in store for her and her future. And what I can tell you is that Nicole is just one example uh, of the many, many student athletes who provide tremendous inspiration to me and I hope to all of you each and every day with the work that they do, not just in their chosen sport, but in the, the classroom, in our community. One of the things that you didn't hear about Nicole is that when she was a member of our softball team, she spearheaded an effort so that when our team would go on the road, they always had some downtime, and they started going out to other communities and doing community service in the places where they were located on their road trips. And I, I know that's a legacy that will continue long after Nicole was gone. And so she's just an incredible ambassador, not just for this athletic program, but for this entire university, and we're incredibly, incredibly proud of her. So uh, th thrilled that she could be part of this. When, when we got word that I had been invited to, to speak today, Howard Milton, a lot of you know Howard, he's somewhere in here, he's our chief development officer for the athletic program, does a fantastic job, provides great advice, counsel, direction. I got an email from him, a very simple message. It said, please try to say something funny. And <laughs> I was offended. I, I, if I'm going to be funny, I don't need to try to be funny. I'm just going to be funny. And a lot of you know that, uh, that I, I have a couple young kids at home. We have a 
a son who on Wednesday turned eight weeks old, Will, and then we have a daughter, Tate, uh, and actually today is her two-year birthday. And so um, at, at my house, we deal in very simple messages, in very short sentences. Uh, we try not to complicate things for all kinds of reasons. So I will tell you my favorite joke of the moment, although it's even above my two-year-old's head, but we're hoping soon it, it won't be. Uh, so two numbers walk into a bar, number zero, number eight. And the zero kind of sidles up to the eight, looks over, says, hey, nice belt. <laughs> Come on. That's funny, right? I mean, <laughs> Howard, check the box. I did it. Um, it, we're incredibly grateful to, to all of you. Obviously, this weekend is about philanthropy. It was fun yesterday to, to be at the reception last evening and have a chance to see so many friends and familiar faces. A lot of you have chosen uh, to support our university in so many different ways, including our Fighting Illini athletic program, and we cannot thank you enough for that support. And some incredible statistics that have been shared with us today know that uh, of that nearly $500 million in new business to the, the Urbana campus this year, over 40 million of that uh, came to the Division of Intercollegiate Athletics. Uh, a lot of people contributed money to support our student athletes, to support our programs, to support our coaches. Uh, Howard and his staff deserve a lot of credit, but all of you who have chosen to invest in athletics deserve tremendous uh, thanks from, from each and every one of us for all that you have done. Uh, I can tell you that, that we are working incredibly, incredibly hard to make this program one that is befitting of such a prestigious academic institution, as we have heard today. Uh, this is a place that has the opportunity to be the model. There are a lot of incredible academic institutions. There are a lot of great athletic programs. There are not a lot of places that are able to marry those two things together to demonstrate the way that those two pursuits can be complementary the way that we can at the University of Illinois. And we are committed to making sure that our student athletes like Nicole achieve unbelievable heights, not just athletically, but academically, that they're pursuing and earning degrees from all of our highly prestigious different colleges, different degree programs, and that they're gathering skills through the participation in our program about leadership, about accountability, about perseverance, about teamwork, that they can then transition and use in the rest of their lives to make not only our community, our state, and our world a better place to live. And we feel very strongly about the mission that we serve and about the, the, the good work that's happening within our athletic program. When I was a football player here, we had a gentleman come in and visit with our team. And he told us this story, and I've, I've never forgotten it. He talked about how a gentleman had a boulder in his backyard, and he desperately wanted to get this boulder out of his backyard. It was causing, causing a problem. It was in the way. And so every day, he would come home from work, and he had a sledgehammer. And he would go to the backyard, and he would take this sledgehammer, and he would swing it over and over and over again against this boulder, and nothing day after day would change. That boulder just sat there and mocked him. And he would swing until his arms felt like they were going to fall out of his sockets. He would swing until his hands bled. Day after day, he swung at this boulder. And finally, after thousands of swings, hundreds and hundreds of days, he walked in, he took a mighty swing, and he raised his hands in triumph and he said, a crack. And I will tell you that that, I think, very much tells the story of what we're doing with our athletic program right now. Every single day, we are all, and I mean this, we are all taking swings with the sledgehammer in every different way, whether it means you're flying a block I flag outside your house or you're going into the office on a Friday wearing your orange and blue or you're making sure to carve out time to watch our game on Saturday afternoon, or even better, buying tickets and coming down and being in the stands with our team, or writing a check to support the I Fund or to support our many different facilities initiatives. Everything you do is a swing against that boulder. And one of these days soon, and it could be tonight, that's not a joke.
It could be tonight. One of these days, that boulder is going to crack. And you have to know that it wasn't that last swing that cracked it open. It was the thousands and thousands and thousands of swings made by thousands and thousands and thousands of people that ultimately made that happen. And so I hope you're starting to see some of that progress. We have the number eight volleyball team in the country. They're playing tonight at Purdue against number 16, Purdue. They're going to go to Indiana on Sunday. They're undefeated. We have a soccer team that's already beat two top 15 teams in the country, including a win against number three, Duke, at Duke. We have a football team that's two and one and came within a whisker of beating a very, very good South Florida football team up at Soldier Field on Saturday. We have a basketball team who happens to have three top 100 recruits in town this weekend who is changing the culture and changing the expectation as one of the most challenging schedules in the country heading into this new season. We have a golf program that's one of the best that this country's ever seen over the last 10 years. We have a men's tennis program that's starting to be matched by our women's tennis program. We have a softball team that's been to the NCAA tournament two out of the last three years. You can go on and on down the list. There's a lot of good stuff happening with Illinois athletics, and all of you have been significant players in making that possible. And so we're grateful to you. We're excited about our future. We're looking forward to the day that this athletic program can stand next to our academic institution, hold its chest out, and know that we are doing our part to shine a bright spotlight on this university, this state, and all the good work that the good people here are doing every day. Now, I was told to make a prediction. <laughs> and there have been a lot of great transitions in sports. You think about Steve Young following Joe Montana. You think about Aaron Rodgers following Brett Favre, and more recently, Andrew Luck uh, following Peyton Manning over in Indianapolis. I have to follow Walt Knorr. I, I, I don't... I don't think this one's going to rate in the record books the same way that some of those others have. But, and I'm not going to give a number, I'm not going to give a score, but I, I will tell you that big moments require big opportunities. And that tonight we have a big opportunity. We have a national television audience, we have a top ten opponent in the country, and we have won these games in the past, and we are going to win this game tonight, and we're going to start a trajectory with this football program. This will be a signature win that opens the door for what is possible with Illinois football and ultimately with Illinois athletics. So we're excited. We're looking forward to a great night, and we appreciate each and every one of you being here and, and supporting not only our athletic program, but obviously this great University of Illinois system. So thanks so much. Have a great day. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. And you were funny. <laughs> Good job. Uh, we're all going to be rooting for a victory tonight over those nasty Nittany Alliens. Go Illini! <laughs> ILL! Are we going to win tonight? Yes. You heard it first right here, Josh. So on that note, this concludes this morning's program. And on behalf of the University of Illinois Foundation, again, I'd like to thank you for joining us today for this 83rd Foundation Weekend Annual Meeting. Your dedication and involvement are greatly appreciated. I hope you get a chance to enjoy the rest of the festivities this weekend. Enjoy it. Have fun. Thanks for being here. <laughs>